Hi, my name is Kai and this is HardwareHeaven.com's review of Dishonored. Now Dishonored is a game published by Bethesda and developed by Arcane Studios. It is due to release in North America on the 9th of October, Spain and Australia on the 11th and finally releasing in the rest of Europe on the 12th of October. It will be playable on PC, Xbox 360 and PS3. Now without going into too much depth of the story, you play a guy called Corbo who is a legendary bodyguard of the Empress. Now the Empress is assassinated and Corvo is blamed for the assassination and is set out to get revenge and find the Empress's daughter Emily who is the rightful heir to the throne. Dishonored is set in 17th century London and this is very prevalent through the use of the plague. There's rats running around everywhere that if you run into them they will start trying to eat you and it would cut quite a lot of your health down. The weapons that the enemy use are very traditional in those sorts that there's a lot of sword fights and they have pistols but they're quite old school pistols. Corvo is the only person seemed to be able to use any sort of magical ability that strives away from the whole 17th 17th century aspect that the game has got. Now the reason Corvo has got these magical powers is he meets a guy called the Outsider who actually gives him his mark which gives him the ability to actually train magical skills such as blink and being able to see in the dark. Now you get more of these skills as you play the game and you kind of run around and you get given this item which is a heart and the heart starts beating the closer you are to a rune or a bone shard. Now a rune actually gives you another ability so you can choose a different ability to use and then a bone shard actually adds bonuses to the abilities that you already have. So say for example you have blink the bone shard could actually increase the distance that you're able to blink so you could blink further away than you normally could and that actually helps build a kind of skill tree as sorts and that's why this game does have a very RPG element as well as a deep story it also has ways for you to improve the gear that your character wears the weapons that you use as well as items that enhance these magical abilities that you have. Now being a stealth assassination action game it does have a lot of variety to enable players to play how they like some people like playing stealth games and still having that very action feel to it they like to still run in kill a bunch of npcs and then run out again and then stealth some people like to stealth completely never ever killing an enemy some like to use different tactics like climbing some like to go underground and Dishonored allows you to play exactly how you want to play the game. If you want to blink across buildings and never actually come in contact with any NPCs, that's absolutely fine. If you want to stealth underground and distract enemies with bombs or ammo shooting in various areas so that the NPCs all run to an area and you can sneak past, that's also fine. If you want to go guns blazing and try and attempt to kill every person you see, that is also absolutely fine. The way they go about this in the game is great and the actual story and the levels and the maps change depending on how you decide to play them. Now there is something called a chaos system. This is a system that actually allows players to play exactly how they want to play and doesn't punish players for playing in any particular style. The chaos system actually affects players depending on how many kills they've got, how much they were seen, if they left bodies on the ground, basically how much chaos and havoc they caused in the last map that they played in. Now, say you went around killing a ton of enemies, you left bodies everywhere, you caused a lot of chaos, then the next time you go into a mission there could be certain NPCs that actually don't like you anymore and could actually plot against you because they don't like the way you're doing things, you're killing a ton of stuff, you're killing loads of people and they don't like that. And then if you're a player who never kills anyone, you could have NPCs that actually like you a lot more purely because you're being the good guy, you're not killing things, and you're generally trying to keep the city of Donwall a good place. 
So this is great. The way you can actually reduce your chaos is, for example, if you do kill someone, if you hide the body, that means that other NPCs won't see the body, therefore the chaos hasn't been seen. You can also use non-lethal actions such as you can go up behind an enemy and use control and this will actually choke them and put them to sleep. So they're not dead, they're just unconscious. And if you then hide their body, like around a corner or under a bridge or something like that, then they'll just wake up naturally and no one will actually see that they've been made unconscious. So again, that's absolutely fine, you haven't killed anyone. However, if you do put them in water or push them off something, then they will die and that will count towards their death. And if you do leave them just laying on the ground, then rats could come and eat them because of the whole plague thing and then they will die because of that. So you really have to think like an assassin. Corvo didn't want to be an assassin, he was forced to be one purely because of what happened with the Empress and he was put to blame and he's now having to seek revenge to get her daughter back. And it kind of feels like you as a player are being forced to be an assassin as well. You've got to think like an assassin. If you go to a door, you want to look through the keyhole before you go through the door. Once you've gone through it, you're going to want to close it behind you again because otherwise people are going to know someone's come through that door. The enemies are intelligent. If you shoot at a wall, they're going to run to that wall to look what's going on and then you can run behind them. And if you use stealth, then your footsteps are muffled and they won't hear you. There's also things such as you pick up gold and food. Food actually heals you. You can pick up health potions as well and mana potions which you use to actually use your abilities. Your mana bar doesn't work like your health bar. Your health bar, if it will go down, you use a health potion or you'll eat food and it will regen to full again. Now your mana bar, your mana will go down as you use a spell and it will go up again. But then the, mo the more it goes up, it goes down, so if you have this much mana, you use a spell and it goes down to here, it will go up again, but only slight, not to full. And then as you use a mana potion, it will go up to full again. So even though your mana does regen after you've used a spell, it will not regen fully. So you should carry mana potions around with you. Now, the different types of weapons and combat are great. You can use swords, so if you do want to do lethal attacks, that's absolutely fine. You can stealth up behind enemies and then stab them from behind through the head. I've done that, it's awesome. You can also jump off bridges, and as you're about to land on top of an enemy, you can do a lethal attack with a sword as well. You can use grenades, you can use pistols, depending on what kind of weapon you have, you have different ammo. For example, at the moment I have got a crossbow. I have normal arrows for my crossbow, but then I have sleep arrows for my crossbow. So I can still use a weapon, however it's a non-lethal attack because it just puts them to sleep. I can put them to sleep, carry their body elsewhere so that no one can see that I've attacked them, and that's great as well. Now, one thing that was very hard to adjust to at the beginning of the game was actually figuring out how to get around the map there was a certain kind of electric wall on one of the first kind of big missions that you played through and a pop-up comes up. The, the way that you learn how to do things is basically they have a screen that pops up like a giant tooltip. It has a picture and words and it shows you how to do the things that you need to do. So it popped up and said there are various ways that you can get around this wall. You can either take the whale oil that powers the wall out of the wall you can either climb over it or you can use a rat to go through it, explode it and then you can run through. At this point I hadn't actually got the mind control to carry the rat and get him through so I used the jump over the wall approach and you're just like where do I jump? And this game, the way it's built is so clever. It is not easy to know where you can jump or blink to. It's not easy to know where you can stealth and hide. And that's what I love about it. It is not an easy game. It's hard to get used to. It takes at least two hours to even understand the way stealth works, to understand where you can climb, where you can run, and also the different ways of even killing enemies. I found that I went more of a stealthy blink approach, so I like to stay up high because 
anytime I went down low or went into the sewers, I felt like I was always being attacked by rats. And then if I was kind of walking on ground level, I would always get spotted by someone, try and kill them frantically, trying to use all my weapons and abilities, and then I'd end up dying. It happened a lot. I died a lot when I tried to be more of an action attack approach. So I decided to go up high. I would always blink across buildings. I would stealth through windows. And this game really, really, really encourages exploration, which I'm not sure if it's a downfall. It's probably the one thing that kind of frustrated me a little bit because with an assassination game, I always feel that you want to stealth in, kill or assassinate or whatever your target, complete your mission, stealth out again, get on to the next mission. Whereas after each mission, you get shown a stats kind of scoreboard and it'll show you how much chaos you cause so your chaos score it'll show you how much gold you collected and it'll be like you collected a hundred gold coins out of three thousand it's like why are all these three thousand coins and because you are traveling through a city you can go in every building you can speak to friendly npcs you can kill guards you can loot them and there's also the runes that I spoke out earlier, the bone shards, and you'll be running around and you'll get to like your assassination target and you'll get a, a message across your screen saying there's a bone shard near. So you equip your heart, you, you kind of spin around, it's like boop, 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 when you see a bone shard and it'll be like through a couple of walls. It's like, yeah, but my assassination target is right here. I've stealthed for 15 minutes to get to where I need to be. Why am I going to run off and then go get this bone shard and come back? So... You really, really have to kind of do your mission. As soon as you complete your mission, you then have to go meet someone and they'll take you to your next place. So you don't just get loaded out. So you can complete your mission and then go and kill other things. But it's kind of like, well, I want to get on to the next bit of the story. I don't want to then run around collecting gold coins and getting bone shards, which was my biggest downfall because I ended up not having that many skills because I just kind of dived through the story. However, Arcane Studios have actually said you won't actually get all of the skills accessible in your first playthrough. So this game really does encourage actually going back through missions, completing the different paths. So say you do a stealth path, the next time you could do more of a combat path or you could do more of a blink path or you could go underground rather than above ground. So they do encourage that replayability. I would definitely say the first time you go through the game, really do kind of concentrate on closing doors behind you, picking up food, picking up health potions, gold coins just as you go along. Try and hide bodies because I didn't do that and I got spotted a lot because a guard would walk past a dead body and be like, oh, well, someone's been killed here. We know you're here. And then they'd start looking for me. There was this really funny moment where I actually got attacked by rats and silly me, instead of like trying to kill the rats or jump up somewhere, I just kind of ran into the street and there was five guards there. So I ran back around the corner, they all followed me and I blinked on top of a bridge and they were all just stood underneath me like, we can see you. So I was trying to kill them and then there was like this pile of dead bodies that had to drag all these bodies around the corner. So there are quite funny moments and you can really get to grips to it, but I would definitely focus on really learning how to use your skills. When you first learn how to use blink, it's quite tricky. Um, the way it actually works is that you have to place it on something. If you place it on the ground, you get like a, a blue circle and you place it somewhere and you can blink to it. And if you want to blink upwards to climb, you get like arrows. And at first it was kind of difficult to figure out what I could and couldn't blink to. So I'd end up just falling into the midst of nowhere. And so that's really cool to actually learn that. The, the, Learning curve of this game is quite high. Um, comparison to other first person kind of games I've played where you're an assassin or something like that, it is hard, it's difficult, it really, really does focus on skill. You have to learn how to play this character Corvo and you, you have to understand the way the stealth works and the way the skills work and the way the NPCs react to things but after an hour or so you do kind of get to grips with it and you start being able to explore instead of just stealthing your way past people the entire level you start blinking to places and doing kind of lethal kills as well and you know looting bodies that's one thing I didn't do is I kept killing these people at first and I was never looting them so I missed out on a lot of gold coins um, but that's kind of the thing that you pick up as you go along I really like the the way you learn things, 
the pop-ups and the tool tips that come up are great the way that it lets you know what's going on around you is great you hear Corvo's voice as if it's like in your head he's telling you like the way he's feeling and you hear other NPCs have conversations about you like why you're going to be executed or why they're worried that you're going to come kill them or what their plans are there's telegrams in various rooms so if you explore buildings you can listen to like the thoughts of NPCs because they've put it on a telegram it's a really great game it's a, such a strong RPG element to it which is why I love it I adore this game it's scary in an intense way because you're so worried that you're gonna get seen by someone and there's suddenly five guards gonna swarm you and trust me if you get swarmed by five guards you cannot fight them off unless you've got like the slow time skill and things like that in the beginning it's really hard to kind of fight five people because you're you've got a sword you're not anything special you're just a guy you're a bodyguard and that's what I like about it you don't feel too overpowered at the beginning you feel like you're learning the ropes and really getting to grips with that thing. So well, thank you so much Arcane Studios and Bethesda for making such a great game. It's got a really fresh new feel to it. There's so much replayability and exciting things happening in the world of Dishonored. So yeah, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to play this game and I look forward to playing it more on release. It's a really great game. Definitely try it out guys. If you want to see some more gameplay, some bonus footage, then go over to my channel youtube.com forward slash kydream and I've got some footage of how you obtain your skills, the way that all works and also just some examples of what happens if you go wrong in Dishonored. See you next time guys, bye!